This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on creating clip speed changes in Apple Final Cut Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video, I'll demo how to use Topaz Video AI to deinterlace, upscale, and enhance video clips. Topaz Video AI is created by Topaz Labs. It's an AI assisted video enhancement tool that de interlaces video, upscales video, removes motion blur, creates extreme slow motion. I've shown you an example of that. We'll talk about it more in a second. It also does image stabilization, but image stabilization is extremely poorly implemented. It's what I can do in 13 seconds inside Final Cut takes 55 minutes inside Topaz Video AI. I love the deinterlacing and I like the upscaling, but don't use it for image stabilization. Topaz Video AI is a purchase. It's not a subscription. It's $299, which is a chunk of change. The good news is there's a free trial available on the topazlabs.com website, which allows you to preview the results of optimizing your video. What it doesn't do is save those results. So you can see how the program works. You can see what the settings do. You can see what previews look like, but you can't export. I use the previews myself for several days before deciding to write about it and review it because the previews were so helpful in helping me understand how to use the software. Remember I said that the downside to Topaz Video AI is that it takes time. If I deinterlace an NTSC DV clip, it takes two and a half minutes to deinterlace per source minute. To deinterlace and upscale to 1080p is four minutes per source minute. To deinterlace and remove motion blur is 10.5 minutes. And to create a slow mo for a 6x slow mo from a progressive clip, 10 minutes slow-mo and remove motion blur 18 minutes and these are all for dv clips the 8x video that i used of the cylinders inside the queenstown ferry that took 45 minutes to create a 30 second piece so it takes time and a fast computer to be able to use topaz video ai effectively but if you've got the time the results are worth it what i've also learned as i spent the week working with this and writing my review of it, which was published last week, is you always deinterlace first as an entire step. Once the clips are deinterlaced, then in a second pass, decide to upscale or remove motion blur. Not only is the quality better, but the time is faster. Doing everything in a single step always takes longer than doing it as two steps, and the quality is better with two steps. I was asked a question at 9 o'clock about why I would use this you use it for legacy footage. You use it to create extreme slow motion. If everything you shoot, you're not slowing down. If everything you shoot, you're shooting uh, with the current media, there's no legacy, you probably don't need Topaz Video AI at all. But if you're working with legacy media, especially if you're putting interlaced video up to the web, deinterlacing makes such a difference that for deinterlacing alone, the software is worthwhile. Let me show you how it works. This is the interface when we have the application started. I'm going to go to the Topaz demo and I'm going to drag in four clips because I can process a batch at one time. This first clip here, this is Dr. Vint Cerf, thanks to Alcatel and Dr. Cerf for allowing me to use it. This is a NTSC DV interlaced clip and as I play it, okay, so there there are his hands, and as he moves, let's set this to 100% so we can see what's going on. And let's just pull this back a bit. As he moves his hands, we're going to see interlacing. There we go, right there. See the lines on his thumbs? That's interlacing. And even today, I mean, all standard F is interlaced, but even today, 1080i, which is CBS and NBC and PBS, they're broadcasting an interlaced image because of bandwidth restrictions. So even today, we're having to shoot and process interlaced video, which just drives me nuts. So let me show you the benefit to this. First, I'm going to trim the clip. So I click the trim button. I'll just drag this in and find the part where he starts moving, right about there, and grab the out and drag this in and find... Oh, where his hands stop, right about there. 
I've now got about a seven second clip and click apply. And the only reason is just to save time for how it calculates. I can also crop this clip and do a portion of it should I want, but this is already small enough. To deinterlace, go to presets and set deinterlace footage, but don't ever upscale and deinterlace at the same time. It'll take too long and you're not going to like the results. Always deinterlace and then set the out to be the original size. So all I'm doing is I'm going to deinterlace and click preview. This now shows it's take about three or four seconds to deinterlace the clip because it's only working with that really short clip. We'll go back to the inputs. So now, as I look at this, let's find a spot where, there we go, we've got the interlace. And let's preview this. And we can preview this. There is Dr. Surf. Uh, the source clip is on the, there we go. The source clip is on the left. There we are. And the results are on the right. Not only are his hands e easier to see, but the texture in his suit is enhanced. And if we look at his mouth, we've got all these lines here. We don't have the lines there. Now I can view the preview as a split screen between the two. The difference is just amazing. But here, another clip. Let's go back to our Mad Fool. Notice that because of motion blur, I've lost the texture of the snow, and I'm, I've got interlacing throughout who he is. Let's just go to 100% because we can see interlacing better that way. There we go. Look at that. I've got interlacing. It's destroying the shape of the snow cloud. It's, the, and the, the, it's just a mess. Don't like it. But it's also got motion blur. So I'm going to select the clip. We're going to go to Trim. Find where he shows up by grabbing the orange bar and let's start there. Grab this orange bar and right there. Take that. So we've got a, a two second clip just to keep this simple. I'm going to deinterlace. So we select the interlace. We always want to keep it to be the same size and do motion deblur. Normally I would do these in two steps. I'd first deinterlace and then do a motion blur but I don't have a whole lot of time to spare, so we'll do them both at the same time. It's going to calculate the preview. In this case, that two-second shot's going to take about 18 seconds to calculate. Again, doing deinterlacing first and then motion blur removal second will save time. It shows me how, by the blue bars, how long it's taking, and I found this countdown clock to be quite accurate. Uh, in fact, it was never off by more than a second, so I like that. As we preview this, Notice here I've got the interlacing right there. And look at, there is no interlacing. And look at the clarity of the snow cloud. And look at the detail in the snow. Now, I'm not saying that we have to remove motion blur on deeply dramatic scenes, but look at here. Look at how I'm holding his detail. I'm keeping the, the quality of his, his uh, I don't want to say uniform, costume, whatever you want to call it. Look at the clarity and the snow cloud. Look at the texture that's available in the snow. In all cases, deinterlacing and removing the motion blur has significantly improved the quality of this video. This was an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar on creating clip speed changes in Apple Final Cut Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 348. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.